Senator King. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair. Um, um, Dr. Richman, well, we've mentioned the subject of climate change several times. I'm haunted by the experience of England uh, between the world wars, particularly in the 30s. Uh, Winston Churchill wrote his first volume of the history of World War II called The Gathering Storm, which was about the period of the 30s when English politicians essentially denied or ignored the growing threat from a militarizing Germany. I, I wonder how we're going to be viewed 20 years from now in terms of the threat of climate change. This summer has really brought it into stark focus with uh, wildfires earlier than ever, larger than ever, uh, drought, uh, the excessive heat in the Northwest. Uh, if ever we're getting a warning, it's, it's now. And yet uh, we're still sort of arguing about it and moving forward. And we are taking steps in various bills and legislation. But do you share my sense of urgency about this and that uh, you know, when, when the history of this period is written, I want to be Winston Churchill, not Neville, not Neville Chamberlain. Uh, do we, uh, can we, can we do more and should we do more? Thank you, Senator King, for that really important question. You mentioned that, will we look back after 30 years and wonder if we made the wrong decision? I'd say that's closer to 20, maybe 15. This is urgent. We have to take action now. And the Department of Energy has to be the leader in taking those initiatives that will make us not regret that we did nothing for the now and the next even five or six years, whatever it is. And I assure you that that will be, if confirmed, a top priority of mine to basically save the planet, <laughs> to do the technologies that we need to save the planet for ourselves, but also our children. Thank you. Well, well a, a, a young, young Harvard, Harvard senior in 1940 wrote a wrote a his thesis called "While England Slept." That was, of course, John F. Kennedy. And I don't want somebody writing a book, you know, while America slept or while the world slept. Uh, we went into this uh, really extraordinary crisis, the likes of which I don't I don't think we've we've seen. So I look forward to working with you on that. I want to ask you a, a somewhat difficult question, but it gets at some of the questions we've had today. There have been questions raised about Dr. Berhe's experience and administrative experience. You're going to be the undersecretary for science. She's going to be the director of the Office of Science. Do you have confidence in her ability to uh, uh, manage that office and to lead that office in terms of the important scientific research that we, we must do? Yes, I am fully confident that she will be capable of fulfilling the duties of that position, and I look forward to working with her uh, to see if any way I can continue to support uh, the efforts that she will be leading. I, I, I'm delighted to hear that. And to go back to the question of, of climate change, you know, there were uh, uh, sort of chicken littles or Paul Revere's, whatever you want to call them, in the past, uh, Malthus being one, but technology saved us from Malthus's predictions. Uh, and that's why I think the work that, that this office that, that you will be doing is so essential. Uh, science uh, must lead us out of this crisis. Yes, I agree. And let me reemphasize the point that I made earlier, that our Department of Energy national laboratories are really the ones that can make the big difference that we need to make. We just need to make certain that they have the appropriate resources to be able to move forward. Because again, they can take things from the beginning of the journey, uh, the fundamental science, all the way to the end in which it's uh, deployed. And that is going to be so critical that we do that quickly without breaking down the stovepipes in order to get an answer to some of these issues that we so critically need to find answers and, to. And everything from, from soil's ability, ability to sequester carbon to uh, carbon removal from the atmosphere to store energy storage. I mean, all of those are scientific questions. Uh, uh, Ms. Stackelberg, let me let me ask a, a completely different question. Uh, Senator Heinrich mentioned the Great American Outdoors Act, and I think one of the most important uh, principles is that execution is as important as vision. Uh, we supplied the vision, and now you have to supply the execution and the implementation. Uh, I hope that you will commit to absolute transparency and clarity about the administration of those of the of the Great American Outdoors Act, the Restore Our Parks Act, where the money is going, 
how it's decided where it's going, what the formulas are, uh, I think that's, that would be very important in, in giving us the confidence uh, in the administration of this important program. Senator, as, as I said earlier, I, I think the Great American Outdoors Act um, certainly is one of the Secretary's highest priorities. It was a, a crowning achievement um, last year in a significant uh, bipartisan way. You absolutely have my 100% um, commitment on, on, that, on that front. Uh, in addition to committing to you to be transparent on, on this issue, that's the way I will work uh, if I'm confirmed as Assistant Secretary for Planning, Management, and Budget at the Department of Interior. I think it's also important, especially with um, the Great American Outdoors Act and the Land and Water Conservation Fund and spending the taxpayers' money wisely, that we um, encourage uh, local, community-driven conservation projects. And I'm looking forward, if I'm confirmed, to working with you and this committee to ensure that uh, we spend those dollars wisely, that we create outdoor recreation opportunities and provide much-needed open spaces for families um, and, uh, and boost local economies. So thank you for your question. Thank, thank you. you. And, and thanks, thanks to, to all three of our nominees this morning for your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Senator. And Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, welcome.